Flagstaff City budget will be increasing their pay for a number of paramedics and firefighters. And NAU welcomes exchange students from around the world. Good evening everyone and welcome to NAZ Today. I'm Alex Lucero. And I'm Kaylee Emery. Thanks for joining us. Our top story tonight, a wildfire broke out on Saturday. What's being called the Cameron Fire has been burning on Alpine Road and Luna Lake. It started out as 15 acres and has now since increased to 307 acres. According to the Flagstaff Fire Department, this fire has not yet been contained. However, firefighters have completely lined the fire. We will have more updates on this story tomorrow. In related news, the city budget is in the process of increasing the pay for a paramedic by increasing its budget. According to Flagstaff Fire Station, Station 6, 83% of all fire calls required a paramedic to lead that call. EMTs have not been compensated even though their presence is required. City Council Member Celia uh, Bar Barrett knows that the paramedics deserve their pay and Captain Chris Samples talks about the positives of this increase. But it was essential that we pay the paramedics what they, what they are worth and that their pay reflect their value to the city and to the fire department. We recently did see an increase uh, to our paramedic pay that was uh, is going to be voted on here soon by the council that is in the proposed budget. And uh, the other positive that we saw coming out of that was the fact that the council seemed to be in agreement of doing a reclassification uh, for paramedics, uh, meaning uh, looking at reclassifying that with the city so where it's not paid necessarily as just an assignment pay but as, far, as part of your base salary. The final budget adoption will take place on June 17th. And just one year ago, the Twin Arrows Navajo Casino Resort opened their doors here in northern Arizona. The resort continues to, to expand, offering a variety of new attractions to their visitors. That's right, and a cele celebration was held on Saturday, and AZ Today's Brandon Newman went over to the casino this weekend to find out more. Three, two, one, ribbon cutting. The Twin Arrows Navajo Casino can now accommodate more hotel guests. Officials from the Navajo Nation, including Navajo President Ben Shelley, turned out to cut the ribbon and officially dedicate a new wing of the hotel. We are celebrating one year of business for the Twin Arrows Navajo Casino Resort. And also today we're, we're expanding and we're, we're opening up phase two. And so we're adding another 110 rooms to our property here. So that'll bring us up to 200 rooms. Derek Watchman, the Navajo Gaming Authority's CEO, talked about some of the challenges they faced during their first year of operation. Getting people to come and, and uh, work with gaming as a career, that was one challenge. The other challenge was just growing into the marketplace. You know, gaming is a competitive industry, and so we're here in Northern Arizona, so you know, it took us some time to penetrate the market, to let people know we're here. Navajo President Ben Shelley says they are busy planning more construction projects. We're looking at truck stop right now so they can pull in their rig to the truck stop and, you know, let their trucks be in service where they enjoy sleeping on a nice clean bed. And these are things we're looking at, uh, pavilion, indoor arena, a golf course. Uh, yeah, uh, also, uh, we're going to have airport here. Uh, those are things that's down the road. Maybe next year we'll be doing some more added, added att attraction or projects, facilities. With the addition of planned retail, attractions, and housing developments, Twin Arrows will continue to grow into a new community along I-40. Reporting from Twin Arrows for NAZ Today, I'm Brandon Newman. The Purple Heart Foundation is receiving a donation given to them by the local farmer's market here in Flagstaff. The donations stem from the third annual car show that was held on Sunday with a total of 78 entries of old and new vehicles. This year, however, was a little bit different than the past. This year was dedicated to Flagstaff war veteran Lance Davidson, who suffered from PTSD. Lance was a regular customer at the farmer's market as owner Brian Yaskovich wanted to keep all of the funds right here in Flagstaff. By doing so, all the donations were given to the Purple Heart Foundation in memory of Lance and war veterans everywhere. A splash of color on Flagstaff residents had them running for charity. 
students broaden their horizons at NAU. Stay with us. I've tried all kinds of TV services. The phone company wasn't cutting it, so I cut them. Spotty Satellite? Nah, that dish wasn't appetizing. But the all-new Sudden Link? It comes with free HD and a picture so sharp, it makes real life look lame. Now I have up to 300 channel choices, earloads of digital music, 10,000 on-demand titles, and new TiVo stream that turns my tablet into a TV and lets my DVR take road trips. I've seen the future of TV, and the future is easy. Welcome back. Every year, thousands of people put on their running shoes and get ready to run. The Color Vibe 5K run is something like no other. It's not just your ordinary marathon that came here to Flagstaff. This one will hit you with a blast of color. NAZ Today's Imani Payne went to this run to see what makes it so popular. Flagstaff runners added a splash of color to town today as they participated in what's being called the happiest 5K on the planet. And they're off, complete with their tutus, brightly colored socks, and neon shades. This marathon proves it's in a league of its own. It's an untimed event. It's not competitive at all. So a lot of people come with their families, with their kids. Um, it's really just have a good time. The participants get pummeled with colorful dust at each kilometer. So for the competitive bunch who finished the entire course, well, they certainly enjoyed a color-infused day. Well, good to finish. I just wanted to run today and, you know, I love running. It's a little blindy running. Got some in my mouth, but it was fun. I just came and I felt good today, so I came in first. Some even traveled overseas to participate in this larger-than-life party. Well, it's our first time here. We are from Brazil, so it's been really great so far. It's going to be an awesome experience, so I couldn't be more happy. This day isn't all about the vibrant colors and explosive dance party, however. It's also an opportunity for this organization to team up with a local charity and give back to the community. So we did it last year. We had so much fun. They are such a great organization and it puts a lot of money back in our community to help shadows provide assistance to people that are battling life-threatening disease. I think it's going to take off even more next year because it's family fun. It's for the whole and you have such a good time. It's a run, it's a walk, it's whatever you want to do to make yourself feel good. So it's just a fun, non-threatening environment um, to come out and to start getting active as well. And everyone certainly got active at the end of the race, Color Explosion Dance Party. Hey, turn it up, turn it up, let's go, let's go, let's go! We love the color vibe! Imani Payne, in AZ Today. Chinese students have, a, have come a long way since protests in Tiananmen Square. The pro-democracy movement ended on June 4, 1989, after the martial law in Beijing. Hundreds and possibly thousands died. These days, Chinese students are finding their voices at Northern Arizona University, as Kimberly Kraft reports. Today, 330 Chinese study at Northern Arizona University, one of the largest contingents of foreign exchange students on campus. Jen Kai directs the International Exchange Office at Beijing International Studies University. She recently paid a visit to her alma mater where she herself studied in 1999. So this two years experience in AU broadened my horizon and you know I think it changed me a lot and you know when I'm in the position of international you know exchange programs I know what students need Kai sees herself as a bridge between two institutions and came to NAU this time to formalize a relationship that dates to the 1980s. She also sees how a foreign education benefits Chinese students. And some of them will become pillar of society yeah, in the future. So I would say um, in some degree they will help change you know, people's understanding about the world, especially say 
uh, under the situation that China and America would have some f frictions. Kai says study abroad makes students more open-minded and less conservative compared to the greater Chinese population. So far, she sees an imbalance between China and the U.S. and encourages more U.S. students to look beyond their frontiers. The Chinese people are really friendly. Once you are there, you know them. Yeah, otherwise, what you get about China and about Chinese people are all from media. Kai says the China we encounter today bears little resemblance to the images we hold of protests in the past. Kimberly Kraft, NAZ Today. And with all of this sunshine, the wind will just keep blowing as clouds might be in our ne near future. We have more with weather coming up. I've tried all kinds of TV services. The phone company wasn't cutting it, so I cut them. Spotty satellite? Nah, that dish wasn't appetizing. But the all-new Suddenlink? It comes with free HD and a picture so sharp, it makes real life look lame. Now I have up to 300 channel choices, earloads of digital music, 10,000 on-demand titles, and new TiVo stream that turns my tablet into a TV and lets my DVR take road trips. I've seen the future of TV, and the future is easy. Hi, I'm Terry Markson. As seasons change, so does the inventory at Terry Markson Chevrolet Cadillac. To make room for the 2014 models, we're clearing the lot, and that means great deals for you on our 2013s. Right now, you'll find rebates up to $10,000 on select Chevrolet models. Choose from a full line of vehicles, including the totally redesigned 2014 Silverado 1500. You can always count on our same relaxed, no pressure environment. Terry Markson Chevrolet Cadillac, real hometown value. Tonight's NAZ Today weather is brought to you in part by Terry Markson Chevrolet Cadillac in Flagstaff. All right, welcome back, everybody. This windy weather that we've been dealing with will continue tonight, and a red flag warning will remain in effect through 7 o'clock tonight. Now, for tomorrow, it will be really windy and a bit cooler than it was today. And then for Wednesday, we'll be getting ready for a storm that will br just bring some light precipitation into the region. Now, for your highs and lows across northern Arizona and Arizona, we have 59 as a high in Flagstaff, 89 in Kingman, a beautiful 86 in Phoenix, 68 in Tuba City, 76 in Page. And for your five-day forecast here in Flagstaff, we've got 59 on Tuesday. It's going to start cooling down as it'll be 52 on Wednesday, 57 on Thursday, and then it'll be warming up as it'll get to 60, 64 on Friday, and then 68 on Saturday. Now for your Sedona extended forecast, we've got 73 on Tuesday, 67 on Wednesday. It's going to be pretty breezy, 71 on Thursday, and then it's going to start warming up to 78 on Friday and a gorgeous 82 on Saturday. All right, so, thanks for that. No problem. And uh, now we got a quick sports minute coming up. Four teams from here in Flagstaff played in the first round of the state tournament Saturday, and let's say it wasn't a successful day for Flagstaff sports. The Flagstaff Eagles softball team were shut out by Tucson High Magnet 10 to 0. Flagstaff finished with a record of 20 and 13. The Coconino Panthers softball team were also shut out 13 to 0 when they played Sunrise Mountain. Coconino's record ended at 12, 12 and 16. And both MPA teams were bounced out of the first round. The Spartans baseball team lost to Chandler Prep 4 to 3, ending their season at 18 and 10. And the Lady Spartans team lost to Bisbee High School 8 to 4, and they finished 12 and 6 this year. There's also a couple other games coming up tomorrow. Flagstaff has a home game in Coconino, so that should be a fun one. Yeah, it should be a really good one. Thanks, Alex, for that report. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in tonight. If you missed anything, you can go on our website at naztoday.com. We'll see you tomorrow night.